All right, guys, how's it going? This is Gershaw from Technical Option Traders. Hope you guys are having a great day. Um, just to get started here, let's talk about what's been going on in the market as a whole. Crazy volatile last few days here, um, up and up moves and down moves combined here, right? So overall, the market looks very, very choppy. Um, there's not a lot to do. I did try to take a play today so far, not working out. We'll see if it works out later on this week, and that's going to be some nice a chunk of change, right? So we'll see how that plays out. But looking at the market overall right now, we're in uh, we're in a zone where price is looking to be accepted, okay? So price is looking to figure itself out in this area in the S&P 500. This is a load that has not been tested since about uh, 2021, uh, March and April, right? So this level is consolidating. So right now, previously, when price pushed through this area, it had nice volume, it just kind of ran through it, retested this level at uh, 403 and then broke out, right? So now we're trying to see if uh, buyers or sellers are liking this price area, price point. Um, if buyers want to see this as a dip buying opportunity, we should see a bunch of buyers then come in here uh, over the next couple of days with aggressive buying volume to kind of, you know, push this, the push the stock higher, right? But we do want to see increasing volume in the S&P 500. We want to see money coming back into this market and try to push it higher. If we do not get an increased buying pressure, we will get a continued sell off after a, a short term rally, which will be a bear market rally, right? If you guys watch my previous videos, this is what I've been talking about, right? So, okay, so we had uh, these tops right here on the S&P 500. So this is why the 430 level is an important level to me, okay? So 430 is something that we want to watch and we want to see what price action does accordingly. And also, if we just look at the trend line here, the trend has gotten a little uh, extended as well to the downside. So I do expect some sort of move to uh, 413 and then the push above to 430 here. If not, you know, we will continue to get sideways moves and it, the market will continue to move in that direction in this choppiness and the downtrend will still continue to hold. So this short term downtrend needs to be broken out around 420 to push above to about, you know, 430 and then we can go higher. Otherwise, it'll con continue to consolidate sideways and not a lot will happen and we will get chopped out. But if we are going to push above, we're going to need to move above 415, then to 420, then 430, then about, uh, you know, 435. But my big move or the biggest level that I'm watching is the 460. Um, and that's a big level, right? So we need momentum here, right? So right now, this momentum is on the selling side. We want to see how long this will continue. We do have CPI data coming out. So keep an eye on that. So this move could get wiped out tomorrow with the CPI numbers. If they are tamed, we can expect a bear market rally. But this move is way too vertical. I do expect a pullback. I don't expect us to continue to you know keep going down in one direction. Uh, it's too aggressive, right? Looking at the queues, queues overkill right here, right? So the w one thing I want to point out right now, uh, this is an important thing uh, that I focus on when I do my analysis is the declining volume right here. Okay, the declining volume over the next over the last few days. So sell, 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 but the volume is not increasing. This is telling me possibly we can see an exhaustion of the move to the downside and we can revert back to upside here. Okay, so this is something important to pay attention to that the volume is decreasing while the move is falling. So this is not this could not be this could be uh, considered that, you know, we can have a temporary pause in the down move. I'm looking for either consolidation or a breakout of this downtrend line and maybe push above to 325 and 330. 330 is a big level for the queues and we need to get above that. Otherwise, we continue to fall to the downside. Uh, let's look at the hourly picture here. The hourly picture looks the same. Uh, you know, we do need above right here, which is the 310 level. But this downtrend line is what I want to watch. I want to see price consolidate, push above this, get above the 325 and 330 range and push higher here. See, 330 is a level where we have the three rejections here, which put, made this move lower. So we do need price to consolidate and start pushing higher. And that's where we want to focus on uh, to earn uh, most of our profits. Now, let's look at Dow Jones. Dow Jones on the daily right here is down below this downtrend line. Like I, I've been discussing this, like this is this area that's holding. So right now we're below it. We can get a push back up to retest about 330. If the 330 fails on the Dow, that could be a big, big problem for us and push down. Uh, we can go back and break this level at 322 and push down to about uh, 305. Okay, so these are all big levels. All right. So let's look at IWM here. IWM small caps. Right, bear flag. I was talking about this. I'm like, okay, so we had a breakdown, pull back here, and unable to get above. This is a failed, okay. Um, and uh, then I said, if it breaks back down 184 and then the 182, we're gonna get pushed to 170. If you guys have a look here, this almost touched 170, went to 171 IWM. So this was a simple analysis that I gave you guys. So right now, 
this is aggressive down move. I do expect a pullback, but if you guys see the volume, it's starting to decline, but the next couple of days could be important for IWM. IWM has gone back to trading at the price point of January uh, 10th of 2020. So it's given back about uh, two years of gains that it started out, right? So it went from uh, 2020, it went from uh, this level around 170 uh, all the way to about uh, 233. And now it's back to about, you know, 170 uh, range again. So, right. So we're in the back end of 170. So this is something where you want to keep your eye on. If IWM, uh, if IWM breaks, which it has done so in the past after consolidating for a long time, we can see, a, you know, an aggressive move down towards maybe 146. So that's something we want to keep an eye on. The next thing is VIX. VIX is consolidating and it's starting to consolidate higher and higher on a daily basis, right? We don't want to see this. We want to see the VIX decrease. We want to see the VIX lose some value here uh, before we take any kind of trades here um, on, on the S&P 500 or even the IWM Dow Jones or uh, to the upside. So no calls will be taken uh, and you shouldn't take them as, as the VIX is rising, right? Sure, they can be profitable if we have volatile moves, but the chances of us making money are reduced just due to the fact that, you know, the volatility, right? Market makers ha have a way of, you know, doing things in volatile environments where retail traders can lose quickly, okay? So this is something where you want to keep your eye on. If VIX continues to fly and we get above 30, 35, then 40 is not out of the picture. So that's something that you want to stay focused on and please do not get, you know, too attached with this. So the other thing that I'm noticing, which is interesting, is gold is falling as well as Bitcoin. So that's interesting. So security stocks are falling. Like, you know, and we want to see where the money is going. Seems like money is going more in cash. Okay. So, but however, this is a, a bullish line for gold right here. If we break through 163, we go down to 157. It's as simple as that, or we can continue to bounce from here to the upside. So we'll keep an eye on gold. Interesting to see gold is starting to fall below 175 and starting to consolidate at a price point below that. So that's something that we want to keep an eye on to see if this continues. Arc, arc broke down completely here. It went to the 40 range. So this is another level that I gave. If you guys have been watching my videos, if this level breaks at 49, we're going back to test this level. And it looks like it could go back to COVID lows. And as you guys can see, the volume on the sell side has been increasing aggressively in the ARK ETF. And this is a telling point that this point right here, 52, will be a big, big level for um, this ETF. If 52 level is not defeated, we will continue to see the ARK decline. Okay. That's something that we want to keep an eye on. Uh, K Web, K Web is another one. K Web broke down here. Uh, it's still holding this bull flag. Uh, broke this down trend line. Sorry, it's still holding this gap, not bull flag. It's holding this gap area right here. So if this gap area breaks, we're going back to test the lows again, right? So a lot of these uh, Chinese stocks are not even not holding up as well. So the overall market, you guys can see, even uh, the Chi the Chinese market is getting hit, and this is all due to economic strains in different environments uh, that 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 the world is setting up in. So that's something we want to keep our eye uh, eyes on. The overall market is choppy. It is non-directional right now. It had a directional move to the downside, which was yesterday very aggressive. Today, we're inside of a range here, a very tight candlestick. So not a lot going on overall today. So that's something you guys want to keep your eyes on. So look at semiconductor. Semiconductor, this is a, hammer, uh, a head and shoulder pattern here. Uh, this, they're trying to bounce. There's, there's no getting bullish above 245. Look at tech. Tech also, you know, head and shoulder pattern breaking down here. This is the neckline uh, that's been broken down at 141, trying to bounce. So if 141 breaks, we're going to go all the way above to uh, 147. That's something to keep an eye on, okay? Um, and, uh, you know, that's something to keep an eye on around 146. If 146 breaks, we can catch a move to the upside on tech, right? So, however, this is something that's a little bit, um, you know, want to keep an eye on. Energy is green right now. It shouldn't be, right? So overall, it's been selling off. So this doesn't make sense. You know, energy selling off. Tech is going up. Semiconductors are going up. Uh, so that makes sense right now. We'll see what happens in the coming few days here. It looks like if the money's actually going to rotate out of tech and go back into growth stocks, we will start to see continuous buying pressure. So until that happens, I don't want to speculate. It's very possible that we can catch an up move in the market and a short-term rally but in order for the market to turn bullish, there are certain levels it has to defeat, and it's not showing signs yet of doing that. Uh, the next thing is Bitcoin. Bitcoin is below, uh, I believe, 31,000. Um, so actually, it's a little bit above 31,000. So if, as you guys are seeing, I was watching this level, that's 37,850. Since it's below that, it went all the way down to 34,000. Um, I'm surprised it shot down so fast all the way down to about 28, right? 
uh, well, 29,840. So this is the level I'm watching here, 28. If 28 breaks, we got room to the downside uh, up to about uh, 25,900. So we'll see if this pans out. B uh, uh, Bitcoin is consolidating in a big range, so it's not really bearish. If you guys see the bigger picture here, this is a big support level right about here. So this is around 29,150. So that's something we want to keep an eye on. Overall, it's not over yet for Bitcoin. If that level does break, then we're in a problem here. But that's something that we want to keep our eyes on and stay focused here, okay? Overall, the market's weak. Trade safe. If you guys have any questions, comments, uh, leave them in the video down below. And please, if you guys like what I do, please make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. I greatly appreciate it. Hope, hope to see you guys tomorrow.